Greetings from Karachi and flood ravaged Sindh. The country could not be going through a worse crisis when 33 million people have been displaced and half of our population is living below the poverty line, with disease and hunger for millions of children looming large. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present my program for rehabilitating one million households at a time. The title is Scaling Up, Barefoot Social Architecture of Baza for Co-Building with Sustainable Materials, which in my case are limited to ubiquitous earth, magic lime and renewable bamboo. The One Million program is based on the Baza pilot of 1,000 households which has been completed between middle of September to end of November in Mirpur Khas in Sindh. As you will see, among the most important tenets is the provision of social and ecological justice to all. But first, a little bit about Heritage Foundation of Pakistan. As you will see, it's a nonprofit organization, social and cultural entrepreneur, uh, established in 1980 for safeguarding Pakistan's cultural heritage. But since 2005, it pro provides humanitarian assistance by linking heritage to, uh, you know, basically social and ecological led initiatives. So I've learned a lot from heritage, which I apply into humanitarian field and vice versa. And I just wanted to show you where I'm coming from, because it's important to understand the work that I'm trying to do. So let's talk a little bit about Baza, which is for social architecture, which is social engineering for social change. It incorporates environmental, cultural, and technical dimensions, helps you rise from a cycle of dependency to a culture of a pride and self-reliance, fosters democratization of architecture for well-being and self-esteem of the marginalized. It promotes four zeros, zero carbon, zero waste, zero cost to donor, leading to zero poverty. So this is the this is the way I would like things to go and this is the way we've been working uh, for the last several years now. And I just wanted to show you that uh, the kind of impact that has uh, been possible because of these particular ways of working. And something like uh, 0 0.8 to 4 million people or about 100,000, uh, more than 100,000 per year, we've been able to target and at least 12 sustainable development goals as well. And then I thought I'll just show you what post-flood um, inter international models have been like. And as you will see, uh, on the left is an RCC frame house with CC block construction. And uh, uh, basically, you know, it just costs quite a lot of money. Anything between, uh, uh, you can see, you know, about $1,600. And also, you can see on the right is the brick construction, and you can see again that, according to an estimation, something like 50,770 acres of uh, forests have been denuded, and something like 316,000 uh, tons of carbon dioxide have been emitted. Uh, this was done after 2010 floods. And so, thought I'll show you my model. Again, approximately in the same time, 40,000 units were built, and you can say this is no carbon emissions, no Trees were felled, 1,750 villages, and 300,000 people were housed. Uh, and the one-room shelters, and it cost only 30,000 at the time. Uh, so you can see it's all lime and brick, uh, earth brick uh, masonry, and then bamboo roofs. It's all locally sourced, and everything is available right there. And this, I found, was the way to go, because it immediately developed ownership of people. I thought I'll show you the bamboo structures that have been built in Kodiji Park in 2014. I've been using bamboo for a long time now, since 2010 actually, nine in fact, when we did the experiment. But this was really the major, a major project we did, uh, which was a public park. And uh, this is the, the picture that was taken in 2022, 21st of August, to see how much water there was. And Kodiji is a place where there's something like it's just high water. So you can imagine what the state of this must have been. And then this is a picture that I thought I'd show you, which now shows uh, the recent, it's a recent picture when the water has subsided and you can see that all the structures are safe. So bamboo has proved to be the best material. It's well anchored, it's well uh, connected together. It's, 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 it's amazing, resilience is the one that saves it every time. So this is the material that I'm promoting that now for immediate shelter, 
this is the best one. So the, at least one room should be built in that way. But later on, you know, once they know how to do things, they can do any, many more. So I thought I'd present to you the case study for Pono Village in Mirpur Khas and its satellites. And it's really, um, you bring about resilience in community through community partnership. This is the important thing. It's not something that I have done or we have uh, promoted or, or gone and done, but it's the people themselves who are partners in all this, and they're the ones who have done everything uh, in terms of implementation. And now you see this is, uh, the. I'm sure we are familiar with this, that one third of Pakistan, as you see, uh, is underwater, which is something like the size of United Kingdom. It's all submerged. There are some of the pictures from Al Jazeera. You can see that, you know, and the figures are that 33 million were displaced. 5 million families without shelter and food, and 10 million children exposed to disease. And you can see how on the left, uh, the building, this concrete, huge monster building is collapsing. Uh, and on the right, you see everything. There's just not, nothing but sea of water. This is what Sindh has been particularly. And then uh, this is something that I very firmly believe in, which is to say no to handouts and yes to self-reliance. Uh, we have to empower communities for post-disaster development with women in the lead. This is the time for us now to see that women uh, are given the role that they deserve because that is the best way to go forward. It doesn't mean that we marginalize men. It just means that women are the ones who start taking decisions and moving on. So this empowerment instead of handouts, self-reliance instead of dependency, uh, they should become partners instead of victims and rise above adversity through skill training and capacity building. This is what I believe in. This is what we are trying to impart. So there are some of the structures that we have built over the years. You see on the, on, on the left is a earth and lime brick masonry structure, 2014. It's a school building. In the middle is a women's center, first built in 2010 in Darya Khan Sheikh, which yearly they have ear every you know, sort of annual inundation because this is in the Kacha by the side of a river. And on the right is the 2019 Intabao um, Research Center, which is in Makli. So these are all various structures that I have designed and, and they seem to have done well, except the earth masonry structure, which doesn't, did, did not do so well uh, during these uh, floods. And so I thought I'd show you the versatile bamboo structure, the log, the Lari octagreen, that is built with prefabricated panels of bamboo. And we train artisans in this particular way of building, and that's why they are so strong and resilient. Basically, in, uh, eight panels make the, uh, you know, the, the octagonal shape room. Uh, then you have the roof that is collapsible like, a, like an umbrella, and then you just finish it with whatever material might be available, whether it's matting or whether it's stone or whatever. And if you add two more panels, you can make a little school room, 18 foot by 12 foot. If you add another four panels, then you make into what we call a, a women's center or another community center. So it's highly, uh, uh, highly uh, modifiable. It's, it's a modular structure. And once people learn how to make the panels, that means they can be doing many other things at a later stage. So this is what I think is the best way to go forward at this time. And then... Uh, so now you see, uh, this is the um, uh, basically the whole area. The green is really the floodplain, uh, basically, and you can see that we're in a, something like over 60 villages today because different organizations are taking up this way of constructing, uh, and they're all called zero carbon villages, and we are making an attempt to mark them all on a Google map. So if you would be interested, we can give you the link and you can see where today these things are being constructed by different organizations. It's not only ourselves anymore. Because the more we are able to decentralize and let other people do it, the better it is, I think. So this is the way we, we're going ahead. This is the Pono village in Mirpur Khas during floods of, you know, in August 2022. You can see that how there was water everywhere. And uh, at the time, uh, it just happened just before the floods, I think in the month of July, uh, Bank of Punjab very kindly was able to give uh, loans uh, to these village women committees. And so something like 70 uh, units had been built and they survived extremely well. This is one of the ones that was built just before the floods. As you can see, that's in a perfect condition. Uh, it's got the plinth, it's got everything. It's really a, the same bamboo structure that I showed you, which has been just finished off extremely well. And this is now a permanent structure. So uh, taking that forward, um, basically Pono, uh, as you see in the middle, is the markers. That's where we have trained workforce that does uh, has been trained to do various things like 
from making the bamboo panels and building to other lime and mud structures. And you see that we have what, you know, altogether 13 villages, 12 around it, which are uh, ones that now are also uh, dealing with different barefoot enterprises. This was important because that is the way they began to earn money as well. But all of them now uh, were targeted so that within, uh, and we'll, I'll show you how, in, in 10 weeks, almost all of them have become self-sufficient. And they have all the basic needs that they, they, they are, they are, that are required. These are training programs being run in different places, uh, wherever they are. Uh, this is how to do it with bamboo, how to have, you know, how to make various things, um, how to make mud brick, the lime mixing, decorating, all kinds of things. Now they're teaching each other. So it's all really community led. And you can see women are playing a very active role in this whole process. Uh, now you see this is the prefab bamboo structure. You see on the, la on the left <coughs> how you have the structure being put up and then uh, you can provide immediate enclosure by the reed matting or whatever you want to do for cover and put a, a reed roof over it and you have shelter immediately. And then incrementally you can keep on improving it. You can put the plaster on or make decorations, do what you want to do because that means that you can just, you know, it's at, at your own uh, sort of, you know, whatever compulsion, what you want to do and how you want to live. And this costs only 25,000 rupees per unit. That's all it costs to make it. And it all it's cost me to, to provide it to them. And then they're the ones who put in their labor and their effort. And there's another one because I felt that, you know, tents were no use anymore. And we just wanted at least for a year before the next rain that people should be protected. So this is a 2,500 rupee unit, uh, which is... Uh, uh, provided to people who then erect it, they put their own matting on it, they put their own roof on it, and then they decorate it. So it becomes livable, and at least it's safe for children. So I just wanted that somehow we should get to people quickly, and this is one way to do that. So uh, as far as this Pono um, cluster and the whole number of villages, the 13 of them is, is uh, con concerned, uh, we've got 100% completion of shelters, we've got something like 85% Sanitation, lighting is about 100%, which is solar panels, water, 100%, uh, and clean food, which is available through urban Pakistan chula, which women make themselves. All housewives do them, and they make them into beautiful things. This is the way the decoration goes on. I just wanted to show you the creativity, the way the windows are being made. It's just incredible what they are able to do. And this is a slide to show you what kind of beautiful decoration they're able to make themselves. So you give people the opportunity, you allow their creativity to flower, and you will be amazed at what they are able to do. Um, and then uh, this is the sanitation on the left is an echo toilet, and we have special seating uh, seats which are Asiatic, one, but it, has, it separates the, the liquid from the solid. We teach them how to make compost out of the solid, and the liquid goes into a pit, which is a kind of aquifer, a sanitation aquifer pit and the water just trickles through. So there's no waste anywhere to be seen. There's no filth anywhere. And so it's completely hygienic. On the right, you see how you put the solar lights in and transform their lives, which is so important because without these five things, and then you see on the left is a is the elevated hand pump, always elevated, this I've learned from Mohenja Daro, so that it, everything can be safe. So, uh, and the hand pump is on the left. You can see how beautifully decorated that is. On the right is the Earthen Pakistan Chula, which has uh, got the World Habitat, Habitat Prize. And you can see how, again, women make them so beautiful and they use them. And so everything is clean now. The food is clean. That's what's important. And then along with those five prerequisites, which I call the basic you know, rights uh, uh, for every, every family, we also have community disaster preparedness going on at the same time because we've taught them how to use lime and earth. And lime with earth is an amazing material. It protects it from water. It is extremely uh, long lasting and uh, it, you know, lime just stabilizes earth. You can see our platforms are 100% complete, raised farming beds are done. Uh, external family enclosure walls are done, dining platforms, nobody now eats on the ground, they all have these dining platforms are made out of earth. And then external boundary walls have been done to thwart the water that might come in, bushes have been removed, uh, community forests have been planted, and aquifer wells are starting now so that we can protect the villages from water just rushing in when the floods come. And then uh, this is some of the examples on the left is a solar water treatment uh, 
platform made out of earth and lime um, with bricks on the right to see raised farming so next time the floods come in whatever they are, they've got the kitchen garden whatever it'll all be safe uh, similarly on the left you see the enclosure walls the boundary walls made out of earth and lime and really clean uh, enclosures now are being made and on, on the in the middle you see the picture of the raised uh, dining platform which is now becoming very popular for people to sit and have discussions and talks and then this is a boundary wall around all villages uh, have now boundary walls made out of earth and lime brick that again is to protect them from water just rushing in and as you will see that the uh, bushes uh, have been removed and they will that means that there'll be hopefully no fire hazard anymore the uh, forests are being planted every family has to do i think 10 10 trees and so they've all got their forest coming up inshallah within a year or two they will be grown into really pretty dense forests uh, here is the pono village um, cluster with the center which is a training village and there are 12 others that are indulging in many different kinds of barefoot enterprises these are all uh, kind of products or uh, produce for them to uh, survive on uh, which are needed by people all around so they are all able to sell now and each one I think the least one they are earning now is about 50,000 rupees so almost each village today is now becoming a, a self-sufficient village and I think that's what's important that they are able to do that so it's got fish farming it's got you know chicken uh, sort of things going on and there's also nursery and, and plants and there's terracotta pottery, there's also matting, so all kinds of products that are useful for people and they are selling them all around. This is the village, the Pono village, which are, you know, the panels, the, the basic structure, uh, structural uh, element, which is my prefab panel. They are made here, they are the special, special training has been conducted and they are trained artisans there. Then this is one, a nursery village where plants are being grown, trees are being grown. Uh, this is a fish and a normal ponds there's so many ponds uh, around that area they were lying uh, unused and now we are able to grow fish in that and this is the first fish that came out 1.4 kilograms after three weeks of the culture that was put in and azola is being grown which is feed for cattle it's a natural growing uh, plant and then matting is being done roof thatching is being done they're all earning money through that then chicken uh, are being reared and also uh, goats and they all now beginning to sell and earn money and, and also have food for themselves similarly there's a pottery village that is just making pottery is getting orders from outside from many other villages and that's doing extremely well as well and the whole village now does this so I just wanted to put to you how, how am I going to get to 1 million households this is what I want really that immediate recovery and rehabilitation, rehabilitation of at least 1 million households and we all have to work together for this it is possible if we use, um, you know, if people are your partners and if we give them the directions and build their capacity and then they will do it. So this is all the different elements, delivery of rights-based elements, as you know, the safe shelter, toilet, water, lighting, clean food and Pakistan Chula. And an affordable, sustainable, locally sourced construction. That is the most important element. Nothing is brought from outside. It's all locally sourced. Adap adoption of co-building, co-creation, low impact, low tech techniques. Then four zeros, as I mentioned earlier, if you do that, inshallah, we, we lead to zero poverty. And then partnership with local communities is important. Skill training and knowledge sharing. And then community disaster preparedness is important. We must do it now because next year is not far. I mean, next year rains are not far. We don't know what will happen uh, in July, August of next of uh, 2020, 23. So we must be prepared. And then barefoot enterprises for income generation are essential. And then women-led community engagement for speedy action. This is extremely important. These are the elements. And there are five ones that I've mentioned already. A log shelter, instant echo toilet, hand pump, solar light, and Pakistan chula. And then uh, this is itemization of disaster preparedness, earthen platforms for water and food, raised farming on earth platforms, dining platforms, community forests, and village boundary walls for flood protection. Uh, and then I thought I'd just show you very quickly. Uh, this is a hub of uh, 5,000. So each one of the uh, clusters that you see is really a, a, a village of one th uh, villages of 1,000. And then uh, the center one is the one that is the training a village where from where everything emanates, whether it's the uh, bamboo shelter, whether it's the platform, whether it's the use of lime or whatever. And then uh, there are other, you know, four 
clusters that it can reach out to. So each one of the hubs that becomes independent. And since Heritage Foundation is doing, uh, does not charge anything for this, all our, whatever we provide is uh, is uh, pro bono, whatever we provide is, is available, it's on, on YouTube, people can learn from it as well. Uh, we also provide training, but the training, uh, whatever um, uh, are the charges of training will go to the people who will train. So Heritage Foundation does not, has decided it will not accept any kind of emoluments. Uh, this is the way I would like things to just spread everywhere so that each one of the organizations that might take one village clusters or one of them or, or take the whole hub, uh, we will provide whatever is necessary, will uh, help in training, will will help in every possible way, uh, and then they can just go and do it themselves. So they see where their money is going. They must be responsible for their own funds. They don't give it to anybody else. I think that's the most important thing today, that all the money that's available must go for the benefit of the people for whom the money has been collected. These are very quickly the maps, as you see on the left is the one with the densities uh, map, and we see how my hubs are distributed, and then you see the flood plain, you see the where the, the whole area is. Uh, mostly it's a very fertile land, and there's no reason for us to not get everybody to be able to get some food out of it at least, and this is my attempt. And then uh, you can see on this uh, in different colors, uh, the one oh, I, I feel that we can do something like, I think it's about uh, almost eight, uh, 90 hubs that can be done uh, in 2023 and then the remaining uh, in the in the next the year after. And we've divided up where we can do it. So each, I have got, got now defined hubs. So anybody wants to come and say, I would like to work in SIN. And we can say, okay, these are the hubs that are available. We can help you with making lists of people. We can give you, uh, provide you training for your artisans and then you can take over and carry on. But we'll be available, of course, to do that. And then, uh, um, this is the distribution, 60,000 in the first three months in uh, Sindh, and I've defined the um, the, um, the districts like Mirpur Khas and uh, Matiari and so on and so forth. And then the, from April to June will be 90,000, and from July to September uh, we can do 120,000 in Sindh, and then Baluchistan and Punjab also, they have comparatively less damage in these two provinces. So we can get there a little bit later. And, uh, and so it's all now defined and clear, and it's possible for people to join in and do that. I thought for the first year, I'll just present to you what is the kind of funding that is needed. And I thought that in the first six months, maybe the INGOs and NGOs could take over. They have enough money. A lot of them have collected. They have their own resources. They could do maybe 60,000 units in from January to March and then from April to June. So that means you need about $13 million in the first three months, then another 15 million, or oh, sorry, 19 million in the three months after. And then later on, I feel that maybe UN system might come into action and so they can take up 32 million or, or approximately 150,000 uh, people to be housed. And then maybe we can also look at microfinance, subsidized microfinance. If we do this, then I think it will be possible for us to do it. So this is the great deluge and uh, this is the bazaar giving that I want to promote, direct adoption of communities. This is what our sponsorship of communities, that must be done. And then we need a kind of a barefoot knowledge network. So I'm trying to establish that at Cambridge and then also a climate smart training program everywhere. So uh, this is where I am, this is what I'd like, and I'd like very much all to please join and take up whatever you want to take up. The next stage, of course, will be health and education, and we should try to do that. So thank you very much for your patience.